Okay, this is my fish room with at least 30 tanks. Each tank is from a different part of the world. I will go over them. Starting here, this is my Thailand tank. So every single tank, the plants, the fish, and everything else, the color of the sand, the the wood, everything is the way it should be for that country. So this is, what if it's got Harlequin Tetras, it's got Garamis, it's got X-ray catfish. So, the fish live better in my opinion. And I know when I asked the marine biologist that fish make hormones. So the ones from different countries compete same as plants make hormones that compete. Underneath that, I have Malaysian, Indonesia, those kind of fish, which is barbs. A lot of different kinds of plants that are just endemic to those countries. That's a Panojeton crispus. So there's a lot of iron in those countries in the streams and stuff so I have red rock to represent that and I have gravel that looks like iron of course you don't want real iron that is a uh, crystal with sapphire a ruby pink quartz crystal that. so you can see the hardest part is keeping some the loaches love to eat plants that's really not great but it really pisses me off so underneath that is my india sri lanka burma tank so these are gonna have danios and barbs and loaches there's some orange chrome either from india see Black ruby barbs, cherry barbs. There's yo-yo loaches and striated loaches. I keep uh, pathos growing in my tanks. If you see here, it goes all the way around, all the way up. There's my creature from Black Lagoon. And then all the way up there, and it's like an inch thick or more, the stalk. And it goes all the way down into all my other tanks. And you can see the roots there growing into the tank. So, that was my India tank down there. All right? That I showed you? Yeah, of course, it can keep cryptocorns. Now, since I follow the natural aquarium way, uh, I don't really clean the gravel because there's usually nothing to clean. The plants, use it as fertilizer. I triple filter all my tanks. So I have powerful hang on the back filters that really make a good water churning. I need water surface agitation. I find that lets you keep a lot healthier fish. So I have two in each tank, right? And I also have uh, a sponge filter right there, see? I got that from Aquarium Co-op, which is the best place to get them. So, the triple filtering, and then I use Phoenix, F-I-N-N-E-X, lights. All mine are ALC for the most part, 24 seven planted, so I don't have to do anything. I plug it in and I put it on 24 seven and then it runs itself. The swamp tank is a little tea colored because the Malaysian wood is still, still spitting out tannins. Okay, next, we're still in the Asia corner. This is my 180 gallon. These three, are, that's the 65 gallon, right? Those two are 75 gallons. 
This is a 180 gallon tank for large Asian fish. And of course I'm gonna mix it. So what do I have? You know, of course the plants are the right plants. So I have Dawson's, red line sharks, I have the mascara barbs, I have uh, clown loaches, I have bala sharks. So I use, for the most part, 3D backgrounds. Sometimes, sometimes I just use things that look right. So this 3D background has space because it didn't reach all the way to the end. And the fish like to swim behind it and come out the other side. <coughs> and then I glued two more backgrounds straight up <coughs> to that. Underneath it. This is going to be my 40 breeder for Indian, Sri Lanka, Burma, nano fish, okay? So I'm still planting it. So these are all plants found in India. That's Ceylon Rotala. There's a Myrophyllum, but it's not the typical American kind, it's the Asian one. There's a lot of really rare plants in here. And that cori, it's a Hyogrophila corridoris, it grows like crazy. Next to that, I have my Asian, Malaysia, Indonesia related countries um, nano tank. It's a 40 breeder. And these are big nano tanks. I don't have any small tanks. I'm selling all my small tanks. So, as you can see, in this tank I have uh, the fern plants, java, fern, and I, you know, I make sure that there's movements and all like that. So there's no fish in these two tanks yet. And now I can buy them, so I probably will this weekend. Next, we go to South America. So. This is a 90 gallon tank and I have rummy noses, angel fish. Uh, I'm getting discus fish. The temperature is 80 degrees and plants are doing good. The fish are doing great. And there's some catfish. There's some large quarries in here. There's a pair right there. They love to eat shrimp pellets. There's my rummy noses. I have false rummy noses in another tank. Uh, this tank got overrun by black algae, so I put a Siamese algae eater, even though that's from Asia, and it ate it all. I mean, this these walls were covered in it. It ate it all in three days. There's like one tiny piece left of it. I can't believe it. Look how beautiful the roots are from the pothos plant. That you can buy at Home Depot. So underneath that is a 75 gallon, see my triple filters, a 75 gallon South American cichlids tank. Right now there's only a, an, a blue acara and a turquoise sevra and uh, there's catfish in there, there's bristol nose catfish. You can see, you know, see that hornwort it's a great plant for absorbing nitrates, but I hate that plant. It's always breaking apart and str strangling my other plants. So, if you look, oh, here's my... He had ick when I first got him, I got rid of it. So here's the pothos. The roots are going downwards into the tank. And I got all kinds of different South American plants. There's some rare ones. Some common one, that's a rare one. Okay, where do I get my plants from? I get them from my wet my plants and I get them from Aquarium Plant Factory. I get them from Glass Aqua and two or three other places. Okay, this is my 180 gallon Brazilian tank. All the fish, all the plants are from Brazil. I made a a couple 
errors, right? There's one uh, Tetra that belongs in a different tank, but so what's in here? There's baby. I have floaters. Look, these water lellas, they suck. Unless you have big ones like this, they make those, the little ones multiply like crazy. I throw them all away or I give them away. So I have baby penguins. I have uh, some rare, some of them are unknown species. I find them as stragglers. The stores all give them to me. I have a uh, false rummy noses in here. I have green neons. I have a whole school of green neons. See them in the back? There's a few regular neons. Uh, there's a school of flame tetras, a school of blue tetras, x ray tetras. Um, there's some odd fish right there if you saw them. I have two kinds of uh, black neons. I have regular black neons that you see everywhere. Then I have another kind that they have orangey, yellow, reddish in their body, which I've never seen before. So the stores in North Carolina where I am are not that great. In New Jersey, we had so many. And where I lived in a 10 mile radius, I had a dozen aquarium stores that I could have went to and they all had beautiful fish. There's a panda, Petra. Uh, I have a fish right there. It's not a silver tip. See it? It's not a silver tip. It's a really rare fish. It doesn't have any tips. I looked it up. I found the scientific name for it. So what else? You know, everything in here is Brazil. All the plants are Brazilian. There's some Sao Sa Sa Paulo plant. My uh, Bocaba australis is growing low to the ground and it's growing oddly enough. I've never seen it do that. I have Subulata in the back. I have moss. There's a fish, catfish. It's a sucker mouth, Autosynclus, sitting in there taking a rest. These are other South American plants that you don't usually see. And of course I forgot the names. Um, it's a hunt, it's 24, it's two feet high, two feet deep, six feet wide. It's great for planting and I love using stumps. And I glued at the top, I siliconed all these spider wood and then I put the um, water lellis in there. So penguin tetras and pencil tetras love to live in there. Um, as black phantoms, male and female, lemon tetras, all kinds of good stuff. My yaka, my yaka goes good in this tank. Um, there's penny wort, it's kind of struggling. And I got Brazilian swords plants. There's all kinds of little plants here and there. That's a rare plant. Um, underneath it is a 180 gallon tank that is being used for large cherisins, which includes, well, right now it's an amber colored tank. These are my stumps and that big log, which there's rocks on it to hold it down. So there's a pink tailed Celsius there in the tank. There's two yellow finned Celsius. One of them looks scraggly. I just got them last week. There's um, somewhere in here, there's silver dollars, but they're babies, they're hiding behind a log. And there's Leperinus. So I have Leperinus fasciatus, Leperinus affinis, two of each. I'm gonna get the striped ones and the spotted ones. And I'm gonna get a bunch of, uh, there's a chair, there's a pink yellow fin there hiding inside. I don't know, they're shy still. So there, there's a Leperinus right there. 
they love this tank. The Leprinus do best. The two Affinis hang around together. Uh, you can see the other one. And the two Fasciatus are somewhere in there. Hang around together. I love my stumps. Look how great this stump is. Right? So these are all South American plants. I mix it for this time because it's not Brazilian only. But this is Brazil only, even the plants. Next to it is my Amazon, but it's not Brazil. So anything that's not Brazil. So the fish, you know, emperor tetras. I have Grimes tetra. They look like flames, but they're in a tank. Now I have two kinds of serpas. The ones with the dot are found outside of Brazil for the most part. The ones with no side dots, I think it's Hifiso Brycon Equus. Those are found mainly in Brazil. Some people claim that they're man-made. That's not true. I know people that found them in Brazil. So there's all kinds of things hidden in here. There's a gold line. It's all silver, but one gold line on its body. And of course, glass, fish. There's uh, green fire tetras. There's uh, blood fins. The x-ray tetras with the black eyes. Those are, there's one of them in my Brazil tank. It doesn't belong there. Regular x-ray tetras. There's Buenos Aires tetras. They never fight. They never bother anybody. Black widows. Colombians, bleeding hearts, glow lights. There's rams, there's a Bolivian rams, there's two of them. And there's uh, the blue rams, butterfly rams. Okay, there's a, uh, those are Peruvian Tetras. They hang around with the em emperor Tetras. This morning, all the emperor Tetras were hanging around over there. Okay, so there's a bunch of quarries, you know, so they're all the way there. Look, there's a big, there's a big piece of wood in here, a stump with a rock holding it down. That's a big rock. And the quarries like to go under it. Oh, here is a rare fish. See that one? The little one? He took off. Anyway, underneath here is going to be my very large South American fish tank. So right now I have two wild Oscars. All they do is love to eat. Now I had them since they were tiny babies and I grew them with plants so they don't rip the plants apart. When I was younger, I would buy ones that were bigger than this. They used to be cheap and everything used to be cheap when I was younger. And they always would rip everything apart but these never touch anything. They don't annoy anything. Okay, what's here? Up there, continuing South America, is my exodon tank. I have eight exodon fish. They will devour a fish in seconds. Next to that, well, so look, they like to live in grass. So I planted lots of grass, Valzenaria and Subulata, right? and they love to live in the grass. That makes them comfortable. I researched that. This is gonna be my piranha tank. I'm only gonna get a few. I used to have them in New Jersey. Okay, underneath this is still South America. That's a knife fish tank. There's a black ghost knife fish. He devours shrimp, man. I put 30 shrimp in there. Within a day or two, they're all gone. So they go in these tubes. Sometimes he zips in and out of them. He or she, and it lives underneath the rocks. I put all the rocks at an angle. So I'm gonna get all different kinds of knife fish. Oh, I can see his shadow, his reflection on the other glass. So he's over there. Uh, well, I just started this tank. It's a 50 gallon. I bought the 50 gallons used. They're hard to find. They don't make them anymore. There's another 50 gallon next to it. And that's my Mexican tank. So these are Mexican oak leaf plants and Mexican swords. Now, what's in here? Libraries for the most part, right? I try to keep wild 
ones. But for now, I have some that are not. I have blind cave fish because they're from Mexico. And I decorated like a Mexican tank would look like. Not, you know, I like plants, so I put all the different ones. But it's not overly crowded with plants. And there's not much wood, there's some branches. So there's some goompes in here, guppies, wild guppies. I really hate all the artificially man-made fish. I have a variatus platy. There's three kinds of mollies. I'm gonna get all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna get good yeeds and all kinds of stuff. But right now I had to move all these here from New Jersey. Okay, this is a 125 gallon Central American fish tank and it's peaceful Central American fish. And of course, as soon as they saw the camera, they took off. There's a rainbow cichlid right there. There's a fire mouth, there's a convict, there's a Jack Dempsey, and there's a Salvini and a Pleco. They're all in here. Obviously, I need to have a lot more fish. They won't be that gentle hiding right but you know I'm, I'm i don't want them all i don't want jaguars i don't want manganese i don't want any of the ones that all kill each other i just want ones that don't get gigantically big I and mean, i have a list of what i'm gonna do so obviously central america so it's gonna be a lot of rock that's the potan koto mojetan gay is only found in south america and Central America, that's hard to get. And I have it here. I put a piece in my Mexican tank. Next is my North American tank. So this is a 30 long, which they don't make anymore. And it is for darters and for minnows, right? So this is for small fish. And these were American plants. So all these plants are American plants. Um, if, I don't even know the names of them all anymore. I'm getting too old. And well, I know that's Bocaba carolinus. And I have uh, Penogeton plant that's found all over the world. And uh, there goes a, that's a banded top minnow. Um, banana plants are from from here, from the south, all right? So all these plants are from here. There's some interesting plants that you don't find anywhere else except in the United States. So it's lots of rocks as the darters, everything's hiding. As soon as you take the camera out, they all start hiding. Underneath it is a 55, and that's for medium fish. So what's in here? Some American flagfish and uh, bantam sunfish. Why all the fish are hiding now that I'm here? There's a fish in there. That's the bantam sunfish. There's gonna be in here whatever medium ones I can find. I'm, I'm gonna go fishing and collect them myself, which I've done before. And I can get some real cool fish. There's Lob Lobelia cardinalis. That's a uh, a local plant and Junkus repens that's like seaweed weeds that you see down the shore all these plants I used to see down the shore it was like weeds I like that plant the giant hair grass so next is a 55 that I'm just gonna keep a few large fish like a few sunfish and anything related to that so these are all American plants like I said now if you notice my 3d rock backgrounds they don't make most of them can't be found like I got some from Universal Rocks they cost too damn much these are from Penplex it's three different backgrounds I glued them all together they fit perfectly in the 55 when I glued them all together I think they look really cool. That's a 3D background. I don't know if Universal Rocks made this. I used the ones for lizards and 
I think it's really cool because you get all these little caves and the fish love to hide in them. And then you, know, you get a little bit of algae growing on it, but it's nice algae. It's not hair algae. This tank had hair algae. It took me a week, a week to just keep on pulling it out every day. So this goes to Africa now. We're at Lake Tanganyika and this is my Frontosa tank. It's a 65 gallon tank. They don't make them anymore. There's three Frontosa in here. And uh, they're kind of shy because I'm, I need to get their other kinds of larger Lake Tanganyika fish that go in here. There's the Calvius and the Curviceps, whatever the hell they're called. They're gonna go in here, right? I decorated it to look just like that part of Lake Tanganyika. That's the 3D background. Now, I paid a lot for that background from, it was custom made from Universal, but I wanted something that really looked like that part of Lake Tanganyika. I glued um, to the side glasses, I glued these fake rocks, right? These are real rocks. And I, I, I looked at photos of the bottom of Lake Tanganyika and I made it the same as they did. Now, underneath here is my last 50 gallon tank. These are the small Lake Tanganyika fish with the plants found in Lake Tanganyika, with the rocks. There's a bag of uh, aragonite in there. So you can see what's in here. Shell dwellers and um, Bishardi and Lalupis. That's all I got right now. It's really hard to find a lot of fish in North Carolina. I mean, the stores here suck. That's all I can say. They have, if they do have any kind of rider, they charge way too much. I really like that one. It's one of my favorite ones. The shardies are really cool. So, everybody's happy, nobody dies. The loopies, the loopies will change their orientation to sideways. I guess that happens when you're living amongst rocks, right? Uh, there's algae on this glass. I let a little bit gross to let the snails and the fish. Okay, here's my, this is gonna be my Lake Victoria tank. It's the only one that's not finished. Why? Because you can't find Lake Victoria fish right here. I'm gonna have to get them on the internet. But I'll finish that and I'll make it look good. This is my 75 gallon, that's a 65 gallon. This is my uh, 75 gallon. They're both 18 inches deep, deep. This is my peacocks and halves. I have all different ones. Sometimes they're real jerks and they start bashing into each other, sometimes not. So I got the remedy. I put the, these two big females. They stopped being aggressive now. The males, you would think they'd be more aggressive not. Once you have a magic number of fish, they stop the bullying. This guy is the bully. It looks better under the camera. There's some nice fish in here. Well, they're gonna be growing a lot bigger than this. I like that one a lot. Where's the bully? That's the bully. So, these are Phoenix lights, but they're not they're the Phoenix Vivid. They're for plants and enhancing fish color because there's not many plants in Lake Malawi, right? So I don't need uh, an ALC light. So this is good. It has switches and it can make it all pink if you want to or not, right? Um, underneath it is my 75 gallon Mabuna tank. Lake Malawi, and uh, the orange and yellow ones stand out, but there's so many different ones in here. There's some really beautiful ones. And like I said, you know what? 90% of my fish came from PetSmart and Petco. The rest came from the fish room in Raleigh and one in Cary, and then I got some from Aquarium Outfitters and um, Wake Forest. I like these, the Masonis. Some cool stuff in here. 
I mean, I, you know what's weird? You f I found a rarer and better fish than PetSmart, which is really an embarrassment. And then if you do find something like this, okay, it's, it's $10 the most at PetSmart. You know how much these are? They're like $50, $60 at any other aquarium store here. So it's a waste of time. Okay, let's go to, that was East Africa. Let's go to West Africa. This tank I just set up. It's been set up for two months with no fish. And why? Because the stores don't have. I want to put small West African fish in here. So all these plants are from West Africa. Everything. Nessia, Amania, the African lilies. So in here, if you catch them, the other day I finally found them. I bought all of them. There's 11 African J barbs in here. They're babies, so they don't have their color yet. But there's 11 of them. Above here is for the larger African fish. So all these plants are different than the one below. I got onion plants, two kinds. The I have a smooth one and a curly one. I have a lot of Anubis in here. There's some nice plants. I have African fern. So what's in here? Congo tetras, Madagascar, rainbows, and catfish. There's those, the Ripides, Cynodontus Ripides, and there's under, under, under the logs, there's a, uh, there's some Dabawi cats. And underneath there's uh, the upside down catfish. There's a bush. Quite, why is he shy now that I have the camera? Uh, you know, the bush semi garami He's a pig. He eats up everybody else's food. That's a nice male. They're babies still. And of course, most of the fish are hiding. Up here is a 30 long, 30 breeder, which they don't make anymore either. And what's in here? African lamp eyes. Some African frogs. And I'm gonna put like African killifish and all small fish. Those are Norman's lamp eyes. All right, next to here is, I have the dinosaur beachers. That's a guppy. And I was uh, cleaning up the tank yesterday, so they're all hiding today. There's two dinosaur beachers. Uh, there's two rope fish. And that's it. Okay. Thank God I bought these tanks. You know, the ones that you can't find anymore, like the 50 gallons? I got them on Facebook Marketplace, and the people selling them didn't even know what size tank. They didn't know what they were. I had to tell them those are 50 gallons. And... As long as they're 18 inches deep, then I want them. Okay, moving on. We'll come underneath first. This is Celebes. So these are fish from Celebes. So the Celebes half beak, the Celebes madaka, Celebes rainbow fish. There's a female madaka. They're purple madakas. And next to it is my nano Australian and uh, Indo-Australian fish. So there's a whole family of, uh, why are they all hiding? Now that I have a camera, they're all hiding underneath there. It's a whole family of uh, thread fins. There's like four males, four females. See them? Everybody's doing good. Next is my 150 gallon Australian rainbow fish. And these are all Australian plants or worldwide plants. There's a good variety of them, but not enough. My Basmanis are really nice. There's not enough of the ones I really want. Like I said, oh, there's a couple of Goodians. There's an Empire Goodian, and down there there's a uh, other kind. Well, I'm gonna get the other kinds of rainbows. Parkinsoni, and uh, the Axelrodis, all the ones I really like. I just got some Wanamasa. 
Empire good unit is the only one that is never afraid of anything. So, continuing down there, we're gonna move again. I gotta move all these tanks. We just moved here. Um, that's my saltwater tank. It's a six foot saltwater tank. It's empty. Underneath it is an archer fish tank, brackish water, and I have stumps with barnacles all over them. And that's gonna be scats and monos. That's about it. There's not that many brackish fish you can get. All right, last ones. This is my Far East tank. And it's got white cloud mountain fish from China. There's none left in China, they're extinct. And uh, gold barbs from China. These are all Far Eastern plants. So, I would like to get Vietnamese cloudfish. I would like to get green Chinese barbs. I would like to get bitterlings. I would like to get Chinese madaka. I mean Japanese madaka. But, eh, I haven't ordered fish on the internet yet. I'm gonna have to. All right, last but not least is a tank for goldfish. And there's a bunch of them hiding. One there, one there. There's a hyphen sucker there. Yes, 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 I know all these fish are gonna get big. There's a weather fish there. There's a Chinese algae eater. They're all in there. That's a Sasara goldfish. That's the orange oranda. I just like setting up the tank, so obviously these will wind up being in a bigger tank, but for now, they're happy. I don't, I mean, those are four different kinds. I don't really envision more. I mean, well, what else am I gonna get? I might get a one of those black, I mean, blue and bronze color around this, maybe, and then that'll be it. Everybody in this tank loves to eat all day long so um what else do i have i have reptile tanks i mean in new jersey i got quadruple this stuff so this is a tank for i also designed terrariums this is a malaysian flying gecko tank and where is my malaysian flying gecko eh, oh there it is right on the log see it it's pretty big it, it, it laid eggs so it did it twice it the babies are in here because I don't want, see, I don't want the mom to eat them. They're not much, they're bigger. And then these are some eggs she laid after she laid the other ones, but they're supposed to take four months to hatch and it's five months now and they haven't hatched. So they're dark, who knows? Maybe they'll hatch or maybe they're dead. All right, in here is uh, my Madagascar day gecko, see it? It got big, it was a tiny little thing. In here there's, a, from Thailand, there's a long-tailed grass lizard. So I have artificial grass in here so they can live in it. They love to sleep in it. They curl up at night into a ball. Once it hits nine o'clock, they do that. So, can you see them? No, their tails blend in with the um, branches I put in. So they're in there, there's two, a male and a female. And in here, there's nothing in this tank yet. There was a red-eyed tree frog and it died. Why did it die? I don't know, they always do. I got an emerald eye tree frog and then that died uh, three months after I got it. And I, I spray the tanks, I feed them well. I do everything you're supposed to do. These guys have been with me for years. So these are two empty tanks. That's a 45 gallon. I might fix it up so I can get African flat rock lizards in here. I mean, that's I, the branch is just sticking in there. And down there is a 30 gallon. I wanted to get from Thailand, a uh, fire belly frogs, toads, whatever they are. I might put them in there, maybe, who knows. I have more tanks in New Jersey. I'm bringing them all here little by little. Anyway, that's the story. 40 minutes and there's a fold out couch. The best thing to do is sit on this couch 
and just look at the fish and listening to the hum of the tanks. All right.